What is 2 plus 2 plus 1? The answer, 4. That's not me, that is Power BI. Power BI at times can give you awkward totals. That it believes to be the right way to calculate totals, but it is not right. If a business user takes a look at those totals, it's an absolute disaster. Probably even a fireable offense. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the reasons for the incorrect totals and how do you fix them. All right, no further ado, let's go check it out. All right, in the first part, we talk about the reasons for incorrect totals. And before we do that, let's just take a look at the data model that we are working with. I have a very simple dimension products table and a dimension calendar table. And this is linked using the product code or the product ID with my products table. And the date is linked with the date in the calendar table. Nothing that complicated, very straightforward. And I've created two simple visuals out here. Using these visuals, I'm gonna talk about incorrect total and a few examples. Take a look. Here, I have dragged the channel from the sales table and against that I have created a unique days calculation that is simply doing a distinct count of the date of the sale in the sales table and I have dragged that particular calculation right here. Now if you literally take a look at this you're going to see that affiliate products sold 290 days which is unique days 101 days for organic and 305 days for promotion. If you add these numbers up, I'm probably looking at a number around 600. And that is not what I see. I get to see 464. Why is that? I'm sure you can make out the reason of totals not matching, which is very, very simple. There were possibly a few days in the affiliate that were also matching in the organic channel Taken individually, these days are unique, but if you take a look at the total, these days are still duplicated, which would have been removed from the total, and therefore you see a much smaller total. Take a look at another such type of calculation. I have the product from the products table dragged right here, and against that, I have the maximum transaction sales value. And I can see that these are all the max transaction values for the product, but if I try to add them up, I'm not gonna get 218, I'm gonna get a value way beyond that. But here, 218 represents the maximum transaction value in the entire data. So why do these totals do not match? In here, if you take a look at the two examples that we are working with, we are working with something called as a non-additive measure. That means if you were to take individual rows, it is likely that the totals are not going to add up to the individual rows. Because at the total level, the filter context is different. Let me help you understand. Probably, let's just take an example of this particular product. When the filter context is applied, the DAX calculation is perhaps taking a look at only balance sheet template data, and hence you get the value as 75. But if no filters are applied, it doesn't really take a look at individual products and add them up. It takes a look at the entire data and gets to the answer of 218. We can even check that if we physically take a look at that data. So here is a copy of the data that I have loaded in Power BI brought into Excel. If I were to apply a filter on balance sheet template, and if I were to sort this data from ascending to descending order, I'm going to see that the maximum value is 75 which is matching, this is the maximum transaction value. And if I were to remove the total and sort this data in the descending order, the max value that I'm gonna get is about 218, and that is the answer that we were taking a look at in Power BI as well. All right, now that you've understood that why the totals do not really match the individual rows, what can we do about it and how can we fix such kind of problems? Now the thing is that at the total level, the filter context is removed and Power BI is taking a look at all the data or let's say some other kind of data, which by the way, doesn't see these individual rows. So what you need to do is you have to force Power BI to take a look at individual rows that it has just passed above and total these rows up forcibly at the total level. How do we do that? Let's take a look. For me to be able to correct the totals, I'll have to revise my calculation just a bit. So for that, let me just kind of open up DAX Studio, help you construct the logic of the problem, and then we will take a look at how do we fix the totals. I'm gonna open up the uh, DAX Studio right here. I'm in DAX Studio, and that is where I do not have any filter context, just as the way that I have it in Power BI. So whatever query that I write here is probably going to see the same data as Power BI is going to take a look at right here. And at the total level, I do not really want to see the entire data. I want to see affiliate channel, organic channel, and promotional channel. And I want to see these individual numbers that I can sum it up. 
How do we do such a kind of thing? So I'm going to use uh, an evaluate to start writing a query. In DAX Studio, you can only create tables. And the keyword that you write to create tables is the evaluate keyword. And I'm going to write a values function, which is going to help me remove the duplicates from the sales channel column. So sales table and the column name is channel and the duplicates are gone. And if I just kind of evaluate or run this particular query, I'm going to get the same output as I have received in Power BI. So the channel is affiliate organic and promotional. Once I have received the channel, then I'm going to go ahead and add these three totals as well against that. So I can say something like, hey, here is a table which has just got three rows. I would like to add a column to this table and the column can be let's something like a unique days. So I'm just going to call this as days. And the calculation that I would like to write in here is nothing but a unique days calculation, which is nothing but my distinct count measure that I have written. Close the bracket, quickly format my DAX, and let's just kind of run this particular query. And I get the same output as I have it in Power BI. So now at the totals level, which is where there is no filter context, I have the ability to produce the same rows as I have in Power BI and the same numbers as well. And I can probably do something like this. I can say, hey, please go inside every single row of this particular table and please uh, do the sum of the days that I have just created, which is the column that I've just created right here and close the bracket, format the DAX. Now at the moment, this is nothing but a measure and you cannot really run a measure in Power BI. You have to convert the measure into a table. So I'm gonna create a pseudo table by initiating a curly braces and close the curly braces in the end and then run my query and the total should be different than 464. Let's just take a look. Now we get about 696 and that seems to me like the right total. Now, how do we implement this particular calculation in Power BI? Because at the moment, what we have done is we have created a table and done some SumX work around that. How do we implement this kind of thing in Power BI? So in Power BI, I have to go ahead and search for my measure and I know that how do I create a table using the values function and in that I will just run my distinct count calculation. So I'm going to go something like this. I'm going to say, hey, I want to do a sum X and the table that I'm looking to create is the values table of the sales table channel column. And in each row of the table, which is nothing but the organic promotion and affiliate, I want to do the distinct count calculation. And I also have to kind of wrap this around in the calculate to kind of trigger the context transition. And I'm just going to maybe press enter. And that gives me the 696 that I was trying to see, which is actually the right answer. Now, if you do not understand that, why did I include the calculate function right here? I have done several videos on context transition. I'm going to link all of those videos in the description. Please do watch and understand what is context transition. But this is how I handle the totals problem. The same thing can be done to our max transaction value as well. So I can just go in that particular measure right here and I'm going to say, hey, I'm just trying to sum the results of the unique products right here. So I have to create a table which has unique products, but guess what? The names of the products are unique and that's what we have the products table for. We already have a table which has unique products. So I can just step inside of that particular table and then run my calculation around the calculate function, close the bracket for context transition and we're kind of good to go. And now if you take a look at the total, this 1145 is the actual total of all the max transactions in the end. All right, let's just take a look at another interesting and probably a tricky example of totals not adding up. So here I have the year, I have the category and I have max sold per day. That tells me that what is the maximum sales per day in whatever dimension that you're trying to take a look at. So here I can see that for all the mid segment products, for all of them, in 2011, in one single day, the maximum sales was $288. Now, obviously, if I try to total them up, I will certainly not get $407 and I will get a much higher result. How do we fix the totals? Now, the reason why we are getting incorrect totals is because this is again a non-additive measure. That means that these individual rows are not going to add up to the total right here. And in order for us to fix the total, we'll have to make sure that at the total level, the filter context is not not just 2011, it's not taking a look at the entire 2011 data, it is taking a look at 2011 and summarized data for all the categories and the very numbers right here at the total level 
and then it will be able to summarize through all of these numbers and then add the numbers up. So our attempt is going to be to create this little table right here which is summarized by the year and summarized by the category and feed these numbers up right here so that Power BI can do the totals. All right, let's just go to DAX Studio and start to create this table. All right, I'm in DAX Studio and that's where I will start to create a summarized table that looks probably like this to force Power BI to see the same table that it has left in the above rows so that I can make the total of those rows. How do we make that? I've already started with the evaluate keyword and I'm gonna to start to write the summarize function. So I'll say something like summarize and the table that I wanna summarize is the sales table because my sales calculation is coming from there. And then I'm gonna say, hey, the first column here that I would wanna pick up to summarize is by the year, which is nothing but the calendar year. I'm gonna write that, so calendar table and the year column right here. And the second column that I would like to summarize by is the products table. And in that I have the category column and that is my table. Now let's just start to create a little table right here. So I'll click on run and that is the table that I get. So I have 2011 of all of these right here. Let me just zoom in a bit. So 2011 and all of these right here that I get to see right here. And this is again the data for 2012. Now. In this table, what is missing as of now are the max sold per day calculations. And I will just add that using the add columns function. And I'm gonna say something like add columns. And in this table, I'm trying to add a column, call that column as nothing but let's say max sales. And I am going to use my measure, which is nothing but max sold per day, right? Close the bracket and let's just kind of run the DAX right here. And that is what I get now. If there was no visual in Power BI, this is what Power BI would see if I were to use something like a summarize function to force Power BI to take a look at the very rows in which the numbers exist. Now what I can do is I can use this particular summarize and I can feed this off in my Power BI max sold per day calculation. So I'm just gonna copy this right here, copy that. All right, once I have copied the summarize function that creates the table that we just took a look, we are going to create a new measure that gives us the right total, which is where we'll use the summarize function. So I'm gonna maybe make a new measure. I'm gonna call this as max sold per day correct. And in there, I'm gonna use my summarize function, which is nothing but right here. And I'm gonna say, hey, uh, why don't you just go through every single row of the summarize, which is probably giving you a table like uh, this, even at the total level. And in this table, I want you to calculate my max uh, sold per day, which is nothing but this calculation. And I want you to sum all the rows of the data. That's it. Uh, check on that. Now Power BI is taking a look at these summarized rows, even at the total level, and now the totals are going to be right. So if I just maybe use the correct measure in the table that I have created, let's just take a look at, do we get the right totals or not? And sure enough, we do get the right totals. Seems uh, right, like 600. Seems right, like 800. And then eventually we are going to have 1400, which is the summation of 800 and 600. That is pretty damn awesome. All right, that was a quick video about fixing incorrect totals in Power BI. Just to let you know that Greg Deckler has been profusely vying people to vote on the idea that Power BI gives us an option to toggle between Power BI context totals, the one that we saw which seem incorrect, and the actual totals of the row through a toggle button. I suggest that you please vote on the idea for the same. Of course, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. More importantly, till the time that problem gets fixed, you have to understand that if you wanna get the totals right, you have to ensure that Power BI is taking a look at the summarized data above, especially for the non-additive calculations, and then you can sum X through that and make sure that the totals are right. These were a few examples I'm sure you can take from these and improve on the wrong totals in your own reports. In the end, before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training programs. In case you are interested and you're a beginner, you'd like to start with the fundamentals first and then move on to solving more harder, more difficult problems, even of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It is gonna be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace, bye now.